Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian, Christy, and I am here with you for yet another Film Rec Friday. Um, this week I really wanted to try something a little different, so I'm going to focus in on movies about the entertainment industry. So movies about movies, movies about um, ballet dancers, movies about screenwriters, um, movies about aspiring theatricals. So we're basically looking at films that have a behind the scenes kind of point of view. And I thought that might be really fun and kind of meta for us for once uh, this week. And um, as always, all of these recommendations are going to be available for free with the use of your Milan Berlin library card. Uh, and they're going to be available on one of our three video services, which are Klebnet Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to those recommendations. Let's go ahead and kick things off with our recommendations from Klebnet's Overdrive. And the first of those is going to be for a movie called Begin Again. Now, Begin Again tracks the experiences of a young aspiring songwriter. She has just gone through a breakup with her suddenly very successful songwriter boyfriend. Um, and she just happens to meet this down in his luck producer. Uh, the producer at one point was really quite successful, but then a series of things happened and, you know, his life just kind of started to snowball out of control. But when he hears her sing one night at a bar, he just suddenly is inspired again to try. Um, thus a callback to the title begin again. Um. And it's just a really lovely story about people who are really at the end of the line, the end of the road, um, you know, at the worst point of their lives, learning together how to build themselves back up. So we get to see, you know, the typical sort of music industry wheeling dealing that goes on that's kind of a little bit slimy you're gonna guess and sleazy but then you also sort of get to see this sort of earnest you know let's put on a show hand do kind of attitude from these uh performers uh the movie is led by kira knightley who plays the female singer songwriter and mark ruffalo who plays the down in his luck music producer it's also got performances from james corden uh, Adam Levine of Maroon 5 in his very first acting role. And he does a decent job. I mean, he's not a terrible actor by any means. Uh, you have the fantastic setting of New York City in the summer, which is almost its own character in and of itself. Um, the uh, producer of Ruffalo's character actually has uh, Kira Knightley's character playing at different famous spots in the city so that they can avoid paying studio fees. Um, and they do these like little guerrilla performances and that's what they record. They want to have this like really gritty, organic sounding record when they're set, all, everything is said and done. And, you know, and it results in a ton of like really funny little escapades because of course, you know, you have to have registration and licensing to be able to record in places in New York and they absolutely do not have that. And it's, it's really quite funny. And the trailer kind of makes it look like it's going to be a romance between um, Knightley's character and Ruffalo's character, but it's not. It's really truly about, you know, their friendship and how they bond and how they build one another back up. So uh, if you're in the mood for like this really inspiring and lovely story about personal growth, uh, with a phenomenal soundtrack and with a gorgeous setting, uh, Begin Again is really, really wonderful. I, I absolutely loved it, and I think that a lot of you will like it as well. So please do give it a chance. Um, the other recommendation that I have from Cleveland Overdrive is for a movie called Life. Uh, this one is a very quiet film. Uh, really well acted. It focuses on the relationship between the photographer and the uh, mid-20th century Dennis Stock. He, he did a number of really famous photographs for Life magazine. And then 
his surprising relationship and friendship with James Dean. Um, and the movie just chronicles the the growth, the birth and the extent of their relationship, how they just randomly met at this party. They got to be friends because they had this one photographer friend in common. Um, and it really explores both of these very different characters. I mean, James Dean was, was an incredibly interesting guy to begin with. But how he interacted with the Hollywood set, how his personality sort of didn't really go with the general personalities that you'd met at, at that time, um, and how Stock sort of reacted to that, that, that very disparate sense that, they, that he got from him. Um, so anyway, this movie tracks their relationship and their friendship. And it also sort of gives lots of insight into each of the, the men's backgrounds. Uh, and it's, it's really informative, but really engrossing at the same time. And that's mainly due to the performances of the two leads. Um, uh, Dennis Stock, the photographer, is played by Robert Pattinson of Twilight fame. Don't let that steer you away. He's actually quite a solid performer. <laughs> um... And he does an incredible job as Stock. And then um, Dane DeHaan plays James Dean, and he's fantastic. Like, there are definite well-known quirks to uh, Dean's personality. And while he definitely leans into those, it never becomes a caricature, which it could very easily do. Um, and he, he plays it with such, like, genuine emotion that nothing ever feels overblown, which again, could very easily happen just because of Dean's mannerisms and um, personal effect. Uh, and so these two performances just really grab you and pull you in. Um, and they're just really powerful acting jobs. And I, I, I was so impressed with the two of them because it really is their movie. Uh, but besides them, you've got really fantastic performances from all of the actors who play very minor roles around them um, from a number of really famous 1950s uh, movie executives like Warner. You've got um, Judy Garland thrown in there. Uh, you've got um, other big personalities. And then you have smaller roles even uh, by people we don't we don't have any familiarity with, like, say, James Dean's family. Um, and that's the other really cool thing. So for the most part, we, we see, like, 1950s Hollywood, this urban, very urban, very, like, hip setting. But then you also get to see, like, these really quiet, still rural parts when the duo ends up traveling to Dean's family farm. I mean, it's just, just absolutely lovely how the production team does such a phenomenal, phenomenal job with creating the, recreating those settings. It feels so real. So you've got fantastic performances, incredible period settings and production design, and just the overall look at a behind the scenes 1950s Hollywood is so fun to watch just because it's such it's such a different world at that point. So if you're interested in film history, if you're just interested in um, the history of, of uh, recent America, please do watch Life. It's really, it's really, really fantastic, well acted and quite powerfully engrossing. So again, check out Life, also available on Clevenet's Overdrive. So moving on to our Hoopla digital recommendations, I want to get started with a fantastically funny movie called Noises Off. Now Noises Off is based on a uh, farcical stage play, and it is a phenomenally well done adaptation. Uh, you've got this incredible cast. Uh, it stars Michael Caine. You've got amazing performances from the late uh, Christopher Reeve and uh, John Ritter. You have a ton of uh, 
hilarious moments from Carol Burnett. It's it really is a powerhouse cast. Uh, it also is one of those movies that will stay with you. I saw this the last time. Gosh, it's probably been at least 10 years, uh, maybe even longer. And I totally remembered the whole movie because it was just that good and that funny. Um, that cast bounces off of one another so well. And some of the things are super over the top, but as someone who has toured before, uh, I can tell you, like, it's also based on, like, moments of reality. Like, you have infighting. You have cast members who will inevitably date. You have all of the fallout that happens when those cast members split up. Um, so it takes those, like, legit likely situations and blows them up into these huge, huge situations. And it's so, so funny. Um... It's a play within a play, I guess a movie about a play within a play. Uh, and, and I always love things like that because so much of it is about the building blocks and all of the missteps that happen when you're trying to get a production right. Um, this is one of those um, movies that will make you laugh so hard, but we'll also like, it's not, it's, it's not designed to make you cry or, or feel things like that, but it's definitely designed to make you love the characters. And that's, that's one of those things I find so interesting about pure comedy when you can fall in love with the character, despite the fact that you don't get to see, say like this huge dramatic range of emotion, you really are seeing only a very small part, but that you can still grow attached. And, and maybe that's because you have cast that is so strong at, at, at their craft. Um, so anyway, Noises Off follows essentially this play within a play, this touring company, as it goes from small city to small city, and then starts to move to larger cities. And it's gaining more attention as it moves along to these larger cities. But as it moves to these larger cities, you're also seeing like all of the fallout from these relationships and that are going on behind the scenes. And when they finally make it to the big time, will the cast be able to get their stuff together long enough to do a solid performance? That's sort of the big question. So... If you enjoy farcical humor, if you enjoy stage plays, you absolutely have to watch Noises Off. It's fantastic um, with phenomenal actors. Um, you won't regret it. Check it out. Um, the other movie I discovered on Hoopla uh, is um, the 1980s version of Fame. Now, it's been remade into TV series and then they did a more recent filmed version, but I still love the original so much. The music is amazing. You've got Irene Cara uh, singing the title song, which is super iconic. Uh, and, and it's just a really, really great movie musical. Um, Fame, of course, covers the lives of young students at the High School of Performing Arts in New York, and it follows a selection of students from their early days as uh, auditionees uh, for the performing arts school to begin with. So you see them as these really raw kids just coming in who maybe don't have any experience acting or dancing or playing uh, music as like professionals at all. And you see their growth through their four years of high school. Um, along with that, you get to see, you know, the drama of what's their home life like? You know, how do their parents affect you? You have stage parents. Do these stage parents have a good influence on them, a really focusing influence, or does it make them want to fall apart? You have characters learning about who they are as people. And then, you know, you have characters who are discovering like the seedy side of casting as time goes on. So, you see a ton of different experiences that people might really have who went through this whole process. And the, the film itself is just wonderfully performed. I mean, you get 
gorgeous pieces of instrumental music from the musical students. You get amazing passages from the ballet students, really solid acting from the acting students. I mean, it really is an excellent overview of what that kind of life would be. Uh, so if you are interested in a crazy good uh, movie musical that ends up being quite a, an extraordinary coming of age story at the same time, please do check out Fame. Excellent, excellent movie. Can't go wrong. Also available on Hoopla. Um, my third pick from Hoopla, there are so many this week, um, is for a movie called The Majestic starring Jim Carrey. I have never been the biggest Jim Carrey fan. Like I didn't love the Ace Ventura movies or anything like that, but I absolutely adore The Majestic. Uh, I don't know if it's that particular time period, um, of the sort of Red Scare era, 1940s and 50s of America, but it's really such a moving film um, that ends up being about like the little things uh, that it's it's hard to it's hard for me to not watch it anytime I see it either on like television or on video on demand uh, uh, moments like this. So the majestic follows um, this screenwriter in the night in 1951 um named peter appleton i believe and he somehow gets uh involved in the whole like blast blacklisting process with communism even though he's not a communist not that it matters but like he he ends up get becoming down in his luck and he sort of a situation happens where he ends up with amnesia and he somehow, I don't want to give away too much of the story, um, ends up in this really small town that was devastated by the war. So they sent so many boys off to World War II and almost nobody came home, uh, including a young man who it just turns out is kind of the doppelganger for, for Appleton. And so he mysteriously ends up in this town with amnesia and suddenly people are like, is this, is this him? Is this, is this our hometown hero? Did he actually make it back? Um, now this remarkable resemblance results in Appleton growing close to this young man's father who had had essentially lost everything when he lost his son. Now, they end up rebuilding a family theater. Like, there's just so much, like, really, really beautiful um, backstory that, that gets unfolded as you watch the film. And it's so unexpected for me from, from a Jim Carrey feature. And I think that's also part of it. But, uh, the way that he is able to connect with, say the girl who played his youthful sweetheart, uh, with Martin Lando, who plays the father with all of the other people within the town, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous movie. Um, about second chances, about forgiveness, um, about loss. It, it, it's just one of those movies you absolutely have to have to watch. Um, you of course get those moments that we talked about at the beginning, you know, of behind the scenes Hollywood and things like that, but that's absolutely not like the main crux of this movie. It's, it really is that development of small relationships and forgiveness and moving forward. So if you're looking for something that is inspiring, that is moving, that's just overall beautiful, The Majestic is definitely one to consider. Now, my last movie recommendation from Hoopla is for the classic Liza Minnelli picture, uh, Cabaret. Now, Cabaret 
follows uh, primarily the life of this nightclub act performer, Sally Bowles, uh, during 1930s, in 1930s Berlin. So, you know, we know horrible things are about to happen. So the entire movie has this slight feeling of dread going on. But at the same time, you have these crazy, brilliant performances from um, Liza Minnelli, Joel Grey, who plays the MC of that nightclub. You have Michael York, who plays this aspiring um, academic who is traveling through Berlin at the time and ends up um, developing you know, a bit of a relationship between these nightclub performers. And it's all about both the decaying of that particular society and then the hope that the characters also continue to hold on to. So it's definitely a dark film in a lot of ways. Like it's not like Sunshine and Roses by any means, but it is uh, an incredibly performed film. Uh, the music is extraordinary. You have numbers that are like light and lively, some that are like super like uh, smarmy and, and a little bit sleazy. And then you have a couple of numbers that are pretty tragic, you know, too. So it, it has this huge gamut of emotions. And um, it's just really, really phenomenally well performed. So if you get the chance, please do check out Cabaret. It's 100% uh, worth the time. Uh, so please do check it out. All right, our very last two recommendations, as always, come from Canopy. And the first of those two is for a uh, funny little movie called In the Soup. Now, In the Soup stars the phenomenal Steve Buscemi as uh, this sort of absolutely desperate filmmaker. Uh, he has what most would consider an unfilmable 500 page script. Uh, and nobody wants to produce this movie because it's a 500 page script. Um, and it's also, I mean, there are tons of different problems with it, but it is an overwhelmingly long story. Uh, so he's absolutely desperate to get this made. And so he ends up putting an ad in the paper. Uh, the ad is responded to by a gentleman who says if he will, he will get this movie made, except it turns out to be a wise guy. So this gangster, uh, and this filmmaker are suddenly in this business relationship and it's not generally a great idea to get involved with the mob. Um, which of course leads to a lot more problems and in the mix of all of this character's woes, he's also absolutely lovelorn. He's been in love with his neighbor for years and years. Um, so, so he has troubles with his career path. He has troubles with love. And he plays it with such charm. That's, that's the thing with Busemi. He's, he's so good at playing these guys who should be utterly miserable, but he plays them in a way that still makes them appealing characters. So you have this guy who is suddenly pulled into all of these terrible situations um, just because he wanted to find success. Uh, and, th and that's the crux of the film, all of these different things that keep happening to him. It sort of snowballs. Uh, and, and it's fun and it's funny. And I would strongly recommend it. Every performance, all of the different actors do phenomenal performances, but especially Steve uh, Buscemi at the lead. He really is the center of the film. So please do check out In the Soup when you're in the mood for something a little bit funny and ridiculous. It's a great, great choice. Okay, so my very last recommendation uh, is for a movie called Mao's Last Dancer. And it takes a look at... Uh, the behind the scenes world of the ballet industry, but also of the life of a 
young man who eventually tries to defect from China so that he can continue to live his life um, in the West and all of the struggles that he then has to face, all the difficulties he then has to face. Um, this is based on a, a real uh, Chinese ballet dancer named Li Kuxin. Uh, like many other young uh, dancers, he was discovered very, very early. It follows his training from a child from childhood uh, through his training as a, a young adult, and then his experiences when he is given the opportunity to leave China to study in the West, um, because the the dance styles are going to be different everywhere you go, and so. Uh, he was able to study here in the West and develop his skills with the idea that he would eventually then go back to China and um, make Chinese ballet even greater than uh, it was at that point. So this cultural exchange that they do between China and Texas, it turns out, um, ends up becoming... A huge political situation because uh, the char main character decides that he wants to defect and in fact not go back and of course there are all kinds of ramifications should someone decide to do that you know what happens to family that remains back home can you ever see them again what what are those ramifications and so we see um, this dancer struggle with all of those you know internalized moments and it's it's really an, an an incredible story, especially knowing that it's what happened. Um, you've got a ton of really extraordinary performances th peppered throughout the film. If you, especially if you're a ballet fan already, like the the gentleman who plays the main character is phenomenal, um, and you also just have really great quiet moments where he struggles with so many of the choices he's making and the different things that he's experiencing um, as a Westerner as opposed to the things that he faced in the East. So um, if you're interested in political stories, if you're interested in ballet, if you're interested in that sort of dichotomy between East and West, Mao's Last Dancer is an excellent, excellent, excellent film strongly recommended, and I think you'll really, really love it. So please do check that one out. Now with that, I finished up with all of my Movies Within Movies recommendations for the week. As always, if you have any recommendations of your own, please do mention those in the comments below. We always love hearing about those. Um, before I go, I do want to do one quick little plug. Uh, if you follow Milan Berlin Library District on Facebook, you've probably already seen that we released the blog post for the first part of our top 25 horror movies that you can watch for free with your library card. Now, next Tuesday, we're going to release the second part, and that includes um, our top 10 choices, uh, again, all of which can be viewed on our three video services. Now, in addition to a blog post, I'm going to post a special video to accompany it, and I'm going to talk all about those top 10 picks, which I, I think are pretty good, pretty strong films. Um, but I would love to hear what your recommendations are. And I, I, I would love to see if you agree with me, if you don't agree with me. Um, you know, if you have picks of your own films that I absolutely should have included that I didn't that are available. Um, I want to hear all of that. So please, please, please do uh, make sure you come back on Tuesday. Um, October 20th and check those that video and that blog post out. I'd love to hear from you. So uh, with that, we are going to close out for this week. Uh, I hope you found a couple of good picks for this weekend to check out. Uh, and with that, I will see you next week. We'll see you later. Bye.